I'm Annie Xavier. Today, I'm very uh, grateful that I've been invited to the Thermomix office to do a Facebook Live um, to showcase uh, two recipes to you all. Um, I actually got my first Thermomix as a Mother's Day gift from my husband, which is uh, dated back to 2014. So roughly about seven years, I have owned the Thermomix. And uh, I've been an advisor for a year, but I uh, found out that my passion is more into cooking and I started to develop uh, recipes. Of course, I start with cooking for my family and my children, but eventually um, the number of followers in my Facebook page start to grow. And that's when I realized I need to um, document and uh, start publishing my recipes into cookbooks. So this is uh, my journey. Of course, I enjoy cooking with Thermomix. I have three Thermomix machines at home. I have all the models, TM31, TM5 and TM6. Today, I'll be showing you how to make a dessert, which is a pandan panna cotta with gula melaka syrup. It's a recipe from my volume 4 cookbook. All right, this is the volume 4 cookbook. So, and uh, I've prepared all the ingredients here. Later, I will explain what are they. And uh, after the dessert, I will cook um, a chunky shepherd's pie. This is my family's favorite, yep. It's very delicious. It's unlike the shepherd's pie that you had outside. I added a, a little more depth of flavor to the shepherd's pie. Uh, I will show you how to make a roux, okay? So this is a recipe from my uh, volume 6 cookbook. Okay, but uh, we will start by cooking the panna cotta first because that needs time to set, right? But don't worry, I have uh, make ahead something to show you later. But now I will show you how to make it, alright? So let's take a look at the ingredients first. Uh, first of all, we need 400 grams of whipping cream, okay? And then uh, we need 150 grams of um, coconut milk. 150 gram of full cream milk 20 gram of sugar uh, 4 teaspoons of gelatin powder um, Then we have here uh, 50 gram of pandan juice extract Later on, I will show you how to make it And a little bit of vanilla Okay, so to make the gula melaka syrup we need 100 gram of chopped gula melaka. Remember to use good quality gula melaka that smells good, yeah. And uh, we need 100 gram of water. Let me get the water first. Okay, so these are the ingredients that we need to make our dessert today, yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, so I have uh, already cook ahead the gula melaka syrup but of course I'll show you how to make this as well this one is already cooked and cooled down okay so remember when you want to serve the pandan panna cotta you don't pour the hot syrup you have to cool it down so this is the make ahead version that I have uh, cooked earlier on and cooled down so let's start by um, showing you how to uh, get the pandan juice extract yeah so of course we need uh, fresh clean um, pandan leaves so, um, yeah, let's uh, set the machine at speed 10 and remove the MC cup, okay? So, let's set it at speed 10. Okay, and this whole bunch, you just put it in, okay? And it's done. Okay, let me show you, yeah? And it's done. So this is how you blend your pandan leaves, okay? So this is how it should look like. And uh, from here, we add about 50 grams of water and then we will strain out the pandan. Let's uh, weigh in 50 grams of water. Yeah, okay. So... This is, and then we will uh, remove the pulp and uh, strain out the juice and we will get our 50 gram of pandan juice extract. That's all we need. We need 50 gram only, okay? So I'll, let me do this first. I'll come back, okay? Okay, 
So I have uh, cleaned the bowl, briefly rinsed the bowl, put it back. And uh, so let's start uh, by making the pandan panna kota. Um, it's very e easy. All you need to do is to place all the ingredients into the TM bowl to cook for 7 minutes at 60 degrees Celsius, speed 2. Okay, so perhaps I repeat what are all the ingredients to put inside here. So we need 400 grams of whipping cream. Let's put in. Then uh, 150 grams of coconut milk, put in. Hundred and fifty gram of full cream milk. Our fifty gram of pandan juice extract. Twenty gram of sugar. Uh, four teaspoon of gelatin powder. Just sprinkle like that. Okay, and a little bit of vanilla. Okay, so let's grab a spoon. Okay, all right. So we are going to cook this for seven minutes, sixty degrees Celsius, speed two. Put back our MC cup. Seven minutes. 60 degrees Celsius, speed 2. Okay, so um, once this is, this is done, we will pour it into um, ramekins or glass like this. Now, some people will ask, uh, can you remove um, the panna cotta out? You can, but because panna cotta is a very delicate a uh, very soft, delicate, creamy um, um, dessert. So you may not get a very clean look to it. But if you use silicone mold, it will be easier to remove. Yeah. Um, yes, you can remove, but I normally prefer to serve it uh, in ramekins like this or glass. Okay. So let's wait uh, for this to cook, and. Um, Actually, we can uh, cook the syrup now using another machine that I have here on my right. So, I, like I said, to cook the gula malaka syrup, we need good quality of gula malaka that is being chopped into smaller pieces. We need 100 gram of gula malaka and we need 100 gram of water. So, that's all to make the gula malaka syrup. So, we we'll use the machine over here on my right. And uh, let's put in our gula malaka and the water. Okay, this is 100 gram of gula malaka. Let's uh, weigh 100 gram of water. Okay, 100 gram of water. And we will cook this for 10 minutes. Uh, at 100 degrees Celsius, speed 3. Okay, 10 minutes, yep. Yeah. 100 degrees Celsius, speed 3. Okay, we need to cook this without the MC cup. Right. So, um, this side is cooking the Gula Malaka syrup. And this side is cooking the pandan panna cotta, okay? And uh, let me get, uh, let me uh, go to the fridge and uh, get you the ready panna cotta to show you, okay? Let me, give me a second, I'll be, I'll be back. Okay, these are the ones that I have made ahead to show you. Okay, it is uh, set in the fridge. You need at least two hours to set this. Anyway, it is served chill and uh, it is always uh, better to eat it when it is cold. Yeah, right up from the fridge. So, and this is the Gula Malaka syrup that I have uh, made ahead. And remember, when you're using Gula Malaka, you always have to pour it through a sieve to um, 
take away all those sandy things uh, that is in the gula melaka normally okay this is not caster sugar so normally uh, gula melaka those pure ones will have uh, a bit of sand so you need to pour it pour it through a sieve okay so i uh, remember when you serve panna cotta uh, this dessert pour the gula melaka syrup only when you want to serve it okay if you pour it um, and not serving it after a while um, it will stain the gula melaka syrup will go through your panna cotta and stain your stain your dessert and it wouldn't look nice to your guest right so when you want to serve it then only you pour the syrup or best of all you let the guests to pour the syrup on their own how much they want all right so this is how we eat this dessert all right okay So this is the first recipe that I have showed you. Basically, there are only three steps. The first step is to get the extract, the pandan juice extract. And then the second step is to coat the panna cotta. And the third step is to coat the gula malacca syrup. Very easy, right? And you will get beautiful dessert just like this. Okay, it's a recipe from my volume 4 cookbook. Okay, now it looks like our panna cotta is ready. So let's press. Okay. Now, we will pour this into the serving glasses. Okay. And set it in the fridge. Recipe Nam Nam Mix 6 with a little bit left, so we just uh, divide among them. Yep. Ta -da. So, one recipe makes six. So that's all for me, from me to show you how to make the pandan panna cotta. I will put this into the fridge to set. And then next, I will show you how to make the chunky shepherd's pie. Yeah? So I'll put this in the fridge first. Okay, so I'm back with the sieve. Uh, just uh, about two more minutes and this is ready. Remember, yeah, don't serve a cold dessert with hot syrup. This has to be cooled down, then only you can serve it. Pour it into your uh, panna cotta, alright? So, this one I have already uh, poured in. So, later on, you will notice if this one is left too long without eating, the gula malacca syrup will slowly seep into it and stain your beautiful dessert. So always remember when you want to eat it, when you want to serve it, then only you pour the syrup in. Okay, um, these are very regular ingredients that you can get from the market and Malaysia is always very blessed. Uh, we can get pandan leaves so easily, so there is absolutely no reason for you to use the those essence, those pandan essence, okay? You unless un, unless you are in overseas, you cannot get fresh pandan leaves, then you have no choice. But for all of us here in Malaysia and Singapore, uh, we are so blessed that we can get pandan leaves so easily. Always use the genuine ones than the essence, unless you don't have a choice. Okay. Um, 
17 seconds more. So if you want to ask me any questions, just ask and I will try my best to reply you. Okay, done. Right, so let's take this. And yeah, we will need to uh, pour this through a sieve to remove all the sands if there is. Right, so I'm going to pour this out. Okay. And so we are done. So we are done uh, with the first recipe which is making our dessert. Later on, let me clean up a bit and uh, I will show you the ingredients that we need to make our chunky shepherd's pie. Yeah? So I'll be back soon. So this one, it looks like a lot of ingredients, but actually it's also very easy to make. Okay, so here are all the ingredients that we need to make our chunky shepherd's pie, a recipe from my volume 6 cookbook. Okay, so let's uh, explain a bit about the ingredients and introduce, introduce to you what we need to make our chunky shepherd's pie, right? So, um, first of all, to make the filling, we need 700 grams of beef which I have already cut into small little tiny cubes, okay? Now, I don't recommend you to use mince because um, the texture is really very different if you cut it into small cubes like this, okay? So you will taste the difference later on. So this beef, I'm going to marinate with one tablespoon of corn flour then uh, half a teaspoon of smoked paprika powder and half a teaspoon of uh, fresh ground black pepper okay later on i will put all this into the 700 gram and of the beef okay uh, apart from the beef we need 120 gram of shredded carrots okay now again i don't uh, blend it in the thermal mix i prefer to shred it manually if you ask why uh, can we don't do this I suppose you can blend it in the thermal mix, but my preference, I prefer to shred it. Okay, uh, then we have 160 gram of fresh button mushrooms. I use brown color one, which I've already sliced. Okay, here I have um, one medium sized onion, which is about 150 gram. I removed the skin and cut into quarters. And then I have four cloves of garlic, which I've already peeled the skin as well. Four cloves of garlic. 
a, a fresh sprig of um, rosemary. This one is from my garden. Uh, one bay leaf. Uh, we need fresh thyme as well. Thyme, the herbs. But I can't get it from the supermarket. So anyway, we will do without it today. To make this uh, filling, uh, to have more depth of flavours, I actually added roux. Okay, I will show you how to make the roux later. To make the roux, we need 30 grams of butter and 2 tablespoons of plain flour. So that's to make our filling. To make the filling, we need a sauce as well. Okay, this is the sauce which I have already mixed ahead. Now, what is in this sauce? 100 grams of water, 3 tablespoons of light soya sauce, 2 tablespoons of tomato ketchup, 1 tablespoon of sugar, uh, 1 teaspoon of dark soya sauce, and quarter teaspoon of salt. So, this is the sauce that we need for our filling. Okay, so this side of the ingredients is to make the mashed potatoes topping. Of course, we need potatoes. I have 600 grams of peeled potatoes here, and I have already cut them into small chunks like this. Then we need uh, 150 grams of full cream milk, this 150 grams. Then we need 50 grams of butter, okay, this is butter. We also need 50 grams of grated cheese. I use mozzarella here and a quarter teaspoon of salt, alright. So you'll be wondering what is this cheese doing here. This one is to sprinkle on the pie before we bake, alright. So these are all the ingredients that we need to make our chunky shepherd's pie. So now let's begin by marinating our 700 grams of uh, beef that is in small cubes. So we add in our half teaspoon of fresh ground black pepper. Okay, let's add in half teaspoon of uh, smoked paprika powder. And one tablespoon of corn flour, okay? Alright. To mix. Okay, so just marinate this. Uh, you can use immediately, you don't need to marinate it for too long. So just mix everything together until well combined. Okay. Okay, looks like this. Ready? Right? So let's make the mashed potato first because we need 18 minutes to coat the mashed potatoes. Alright? So I think I will use um, this uh, Thermomix to make the mashed potatoes because the ingredients are over here. So in the clean TM bowl, we are going to add in the potatoes. This is 600 gram, yeah? Add in the potatoes. And then we will add in the butter. Okay, 50 grams of butter, use a spoon. Okay, and uh, what else we need? 150 grams of milk. Alright, so add in. Alright. And we are going to cook this for 18 minutes at 100 degrees Celsius, speed 2. Okay. Now, I didn't use the butterfly because most of you will ask, why don't use the butterfly when you make mashed potatoes? I don't use because uh, one less item for me to wash. So, <laughs> lazy step. Anyway, Thermomix is very powerful. So, you don't need the butterfly. Uh, when you're blending it. So 100 degrees Celsius, 18 minutes, 100 degrees Celsius, uh, speed 2. Yep, speed 2. Alright, so now the potatoes are cooking and I will uh, move towards this side to cook the roux, to show you how to make a roux, okay? Uh, let me uh, take, take something to wipe off my finger first, just now I touch butter. Okay, to make the roux, uh, we need a pan, a small pan. Okay, we do, the, we do this on the stove, okay? We need a small pan. 
and uh, the roux is actually very simple just 30 grams of butter and 2 tablespoons of plain flour alright so uh, we are going to heat up the butter let me just turn on this okay so just heat up the butter so Until the butter has melted, then only you add in your two tablespoons of flour. Okay, so add in the flour now. Two tablespoons of plain flour. So you keep stirring and you will cook until it starts to brown. Okay, and you start to get a very nice uh, nutty buttery aroma. So this is the rule. So give it a bit of time. Cook until it starts to brown. Yeah. Just give it a, a minute more. Alright. Now you can start to smell the very nice nutty aroma coming from the roux. Right? It looks okay already. They start browning already, especially the side. Now quickly turn off the heat. Okay. Now this is how you make a roux, okay? With this thing, it really brings your shepherd's pie into a whole new level. Yep. So let's remove this. Let's see. Alright, so I am going to take away this stove and put it here. Alright? Just let give me a second. Okay, so um, yeah, the roux is done. Um, our sauce is done, okay? The sauce I already repeated to you just now. It's just 100 grams of water, 3 tablespoons of light soy sauce, 2 tablespoons of tomato ketchup, 1 tablespoon of sugar, uh, 1 teaspoon of dark soy sauce, and a quarter teaspoon of salt. So this is the sauce, okay? Put here. Now we're going to make the filling, yeah? So first of all, we place the garlic and the onion into the TM bowl to chop, all right? So let's put our uh, a medium-sized onion, which is about 150 grams. You cut it into quarters. All right, and four cloves of garlic. All right, four cloves of garlic. So we are going to chop this for five seconds at speed five. Okay. Okay. So we are going to spray it down. And uh, add in our butter. Oh yeah, I forgot to get a uh, we need 30 gram of 20 gram of butter. Let me go and get my butter. I miss out this part. So we are going to saute with 20 gram of butter, but let me get the butter first, yeah. Okay, so so sorry about it. I forgot the 20 gram of butter that we need to saute the onion and the garlic. So add in our 20 gram of butter now. And uh, we are going to add in the carrots as well. So I have here 120 grams of shredded carrot. So add in as well. Okay. And now we are going to saute this for 4 minutes at 100 degrees Celsius. Um, reverse speed 1. Reverse speed 1. Okay, so we are going to saute the chopped garlic, the chopped onion and our shredded carrot 120 gram with 20 gram of butter here for 4 minutes 100 degrees Celsius reverse speed 1. Okay, yes, our roux is ready, it smells good, it smells nutty and it's very important to make uh, this recipe to taste 
not like those sell outside. Definitely tastes better with this added roux. Okay, so now you know how to make roux, which is very simple. Just cooking flour and uh, butter together and you get roux. Okay, this is a nice uh, brown colour that we will add into here later on. Okay, I will tidy up some of the things that are not needed and I'll be back. I really hope that you will try out this recipe because it uh, it pleases the children and the adults. Everybody will love it. I believe if you make this, um, you, your family will be very happy. So um, yeah, it will. It should look something like this. Okay, it's a recipe from my Volume Six cookbook. All right. You can purchase the cookbooks, of course, from my website or um, if you're unsure how to get it, you can just PM me uh, in my Facebook page. You can follow me on Instagram. Yeah, um, I go by the name of Any Saviour Kitchen. So if you have any questions that you're unsure of, you can always ask me. I may not have the answer to all the questions that you ask, but I always try my best to share with you what I know, yeah, my cooking experience. Okay, yeah, just in time. This one is ready. So let's read along what we need to do next. Okay, add in the rest of the ingredients except the roux and the sauce mixture to cook for 15 minutes. So let's add in our sauce first. Okay. Right, add in our sauce, uh, add in our meat, okay, add in our meat. Okay. And now we will add in um, the rosemary, just the leaves, this is how you should take out just the leaves. All right, just remove. This one we don't need, okay? This one we don't need. One bay leaf, 160 gram of sliced button mushroom. Okay, now uh, give everything a stir first. Try to loosen the meat a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Looks okay. So now we are going to cook this for um, 15 minutes, 100 degrees Celsius, reverse speed one. So let's cook this for 15 minutes. All right. Okay, let me tidy up the, the counter a bit. I like to clean up as I cook. Too messy, I don't know how to cook. Okay, I will bring this over to the sink, wash my hands and uh, come back with... Uh, yeah, come back again, yeah? So give me a minute. this quite long actually uh, as I read on my own recipe um, now we are cooking for the 15 minutes 100 degrees Celsius reverse speed one after that we need to continue to cook for another 80 minutes at the Roma temperature to reduce the sauce yep then only we add in the roux and cook for the last two minutes so um, this filling actually takes a bit of time but I, uh, I assure you uh, with the Thermomix, it's actually very easy because uh, you don't need to stir. Thermomix is stirring for you. 
so uh, it saves up a lot of, of your time so in, in fact at this time if you are cooking this recipe you can just go MIA for a while play with your phone go check your Instagram you know so you don't need to station here it's not just the mothers who need to cook nowadays I believe a lot of fathers are also into cooking and um, Thermomix uh, is perfect for people of all ages actually not just for mothers fathers it is good for people in their retirement age it's good for children to learn how to cook now my daughter although she is not really into cooking with the thermal mix but whenever she wants to make pizza she will never say no to thermal mix because she knows how much time and effort it saves her to make a, a, a very decent pizza dough Okay, so my children love to use the Thermomix to make dough uh, for their fresh pasta, for their pizza, uh, for their cinnamon rolls. So whenever we are making buns, the children will sure say yes to Thermomix. So really Thermomix is um, a perfect machine to complete your kitchen. Uh, it is perfect for anyone to use because it's very easy to use. Alright, so our mashed potato is uh, done. So this is how it looks like. We have 600 grams of peeled potatoes here. So now I will add in our 50 grams of grated cheese. I use mozzarella, okay, 50 grams, and a quarter teaspoon of salt. So I will add in now. Quarter teaspoon of salt. Okay, um, we will blend this for 30 seconds at speed 4 until it is smooth. 30 seconds speed 4. So again, uh, mashed potatoes is almost effortless in the Thermomix. You don't need to manually mash it. Uh, Thermomix makes the perfect mashed potatoes very smooth, very creamy, and very easy. Yeah. Okay. All right. So this is how your mashed potatoes should look like. Okay. Now uh, it's very hot. Now we are going to leave it aside for us. Because our filling is not ready, so just leave it aside. I will be away to get the baking dish. I really do hope that when you buy the Thermomix machine, you will make good use of it because there are so many recipes in the cookie dough. Yeah? I believe it's over 50,000 recipes for you to explore. So there is no reason why you cannot whip up anything uh, simple yet delicious for your family to enjoy. Yeah? If you are not interested in any cookbooks, the cookie do have enough recipes for you to explore. Right, it's done. Okay, so now we are going to give everything a good stir and continue to cook for 18 minutes because we want the sauce to reduce. All right, so we are going to cook this for 18 minutes at Veroma. Reverse uh, speed one. Okay, we are going to cook this for another 18 minutes for the sauce to reduce um, and then only we will add in our roux to cook for the last two minutes but because of timing issue i've already cooked ahead a portion that is already been reduced all right so now i'm going to um uh show you uh the the reduced version one by adding the roux inside to cook for the last two minutes okay i'm going to replace this one with the one that i have already reduced the sauce okay so i will cook this at the back office and i will bring back the one that i have reduced the sauce
Okay, so this is the one that I have cooked earlier on. Let me show you. It looks like this, which is uh, reduced already the sauce. And now the last step, let me put it here first. We are going to add in the roux, okay? The roux that we cooked just now earlier on. So we are going to add in this roux and cook for the final two minutes. Alright, then stop. Okay, let's cook for the final two minutes. Um, two minutes. Uh, we are going to cook this for two minutes at Veroma. Reverse speed one. Okay, so we are just uh, waiting to for this filling to finish and then we'll pour it in here and then we will uh, cover it with the mashed potato and then we can uh, bake it in the oven yeah so uh, to bake in the oven uh, basically you just need to melt the cheese that I sprinkle on top until it browns and then it is ready to serve all right because everything is cold so the whole intention of putting it into the oven is to melt the cheese and to brown the cheese so you can use a very high temperature to achieve it in the shortest time so I would suggest um, 200 degrees Celsius uh, for 20, 20 to 25 minutes, all right? So like I said, everything is cooked. So there's nothing raw. All you need to do is to melt the cheese and to give it a nice brown color before you serve it, all right? So um, one more minute until the filling is ready, then we will pour it out into here, okay? Very easy recipe, very delicious. And I hope you will cook this for your family to enjoy. I already preheat the oven here yeah, to 200 degrees Celsius. So we just need to uh, brown the top basically. Okay, it's done. So, this is our filling. I'm going to pour it into here. Take away the, just take away the bay leaf. Yep. Maybe you can fit all. Looks like the baking dish is enough to accommodate the entire recipe. Yep. So, it's a... Uh, it's back. And now we will take out the mashed potato. Let's just spread it in. I'll grab a new spoon to help. Mm. Let me go and grab a new spoon, yeah? I'll be back because I need a clean spoon. Spread it.
so good. Okay, so now we just sprinkle on the cheese, a little bit do, and then we can bake it until the cheese melts and the top is brown. Just put all on top. Okay, so this is how it should look like before you bake. Now we are going to bake this in the oven, uh, a preheated oven to 200 degrees Celsius, okay, for 20 to 25 minutes or until the cheese melts and turns brown. Okay, so I'm going to put this in the oven now. I have prepared a little bit of garnish, uh, which is uh, just parsley. So my pie is ready, almost ready. I'm going to get it now. Our shepherd's pie is ready. Okay, let me show to the camera. So it looks like this. Well, this is a little bit overdone, but um, just watch the fire next time, yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, this is our garnish. Uh, this is still very hot, so maybe we'll put our garnish later. I'll go and grab my panna cotta and the gula melaka syrup, yeah. Okay, now we can garnish. Just okay. So these are the two recipes that I have prepared for you today in this Facebook Live. Uh, pandan panna cotta with gula melaka syrup and the chunky shepherd's pie. I hope you will try the recipe. I hope you enjoy the Facebook Live and keep watching Thermomix uh, Facebook for other lives with other future chefs, all right? So I'll see you again soon. Bye.